Welcome to this full length flow class. This class is going to include asana poses, some time for shavasana, relaxation, breathing and meditation. Now this is a beginner plus to intermediate class, so assume some level of familiarity with the poses. If you're totally new to yoga, I do have a beginner version of this class linked in the comments below, in the description below, and that includes a slightly slower pace, some more alignment cues and gentler transitions. So feel free to look at that if you feel like that might suit you better. This class will build up in intensity. I love to give variations of poses, so feel free at any point to stick with the variation we took previously, if that's just right for you. It might help you today if your hamstrings are on the tighter side to have a couple of blocks. And if you like a blanket to be comfortable in Shavasana or your bolster, anything else that you enjoy in your practice, have those close by. And I'll meet you in child's pose. So we'll start out close to the mat, knees down, Take them a little bit wide with your big toes touching. And stretch your hands forwards into Balasana. Rest your head down. And start to breathe into your low back on your inhales. And slowly out through your nose on your exhales. Full breath in. And slow exhale. Start to set the pace of breath for your practice. Giving yourself a chance to arrive on your mat. Let go of whatever's happened already today or what may happen later on today and allow yourself to just be in the moment with your practice, present with your breath, present with the sensations occurring within your body, soften into that. Let's walk your hands over to the right hand side. So take them even off the side of your mat. Reach more with your left hand than with your right to create a stretch through the left side of your body. Sit your left heel toward, sorry, your left hip towards your heel. And breathe into your left waist and ribs. Slowly exhaling. With some ujjayi breaths throughout your practice. Come through center and over to the other side, over to the left with both hands, even off the side of your mat. Reach your right fingertips. And keep your right hip towards your bum. <laughs> hip towards your heel. One more breath into your right ribs and out and come back to center. And let's rise up to tabletop. Walk your hands in, your knee, knees in underneath your hips. Pause in your tabletop, arms straight, belly firm. Take a deep breath in. Grip your fingertips, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Lift your hips up and back. Relax your neck and look at your feet. Set up your strong down dog, a reminder that your feet hip distance or a little wider, hands a shoulder distance or a touch wider. Push actively through your hands. Turn up through Mula Banda and Uriana Banda. Good, lower your knees down towards the mat, land super light please. Let your right hand stay close to the edge of your mat, kick your right toes off and let your left leg stretch back straight. Lift your left hand up to the ceiling. Breathe in, reach high. And as you exhale, reach the left hand forwards and towards parallel to the earth, getting another side stretch. Inhale, take the hand back up. 
Look down towards your mat, spin down, bring the left knee to the earth, the left toes off the side of your mat, right leg is straight. Stretch it back, inhale, right hand up to the sky, big breath in. And stretch it forwards towards parallel to the ground. Keep that right foot glued to the mat. Inhale it back up. Exhale down to the floor. And both hands down, both knees down. Take a breath in. And back to your child's pose. Inhale, tabletop, rise up. Grip your fingertips. Tuck your toes, exhale down dog. Lower down lightly to your knees again. And as you come into your exhale, come into side plank like you did that last round. And this time, lift your left foot up. And use your inhale to expand. Exhale, reach your left hand forwards, just like you did a moment ago. So you're pressing through your left heel, lift your outer left foot to the sky. Reach your left fingertips as far forwards as you can. You can look down for balance to the side for something more neutral or up for a bit more of a challenge. And we'll start to come out, left hand up, down to the ground, left foot and knee come down. And on your inhale, you can expand open to the other side. Right foot stretches up and back, right hand to the sky. Pause for a moment, lift up through the outer right foot, grip your left fingers and reach your right hand forwards. Lots of energy in this right side, waking it up. You can look down for balance to the side for neutral or up for the challenge. Come back up with your right hand and release all the way down. Take your breath in and child's pose again. One more time, let's come up, tabletop. That one facing dog. Pause for your inhale. Push your arms, exhale, stretch into the legs by sinking the heels a bit. You can keep your knees a little soft if you need to. And it's okay if the heels don't touch the ground. Get lower down to your knees. Final round of this for right now. Right toes kick off, left foot stretches back. Left hand up. Left foot up, left hand forwards and start to pulse. Left foot lifts and lowers. Nine, eight, just a little lift. Remember where you can look down, neutral or up. Five, four, waking up the outside of the left hip. Three, two, and one, release down. Same thing on the other side. Right foot back, right hand up. Right foot lifts, strong through the outer foot and hip. Right hand reaches forwards and then pulse, little lifts and lowers, 10, nine, eight. Remember you can look down or neutral or up. Four, three, two, and one, soften it down. Take your breath in when you arrive in tabletop. Back to your child's pose. Take a deep breath. Sigh it out. Let's continue to move yogis. Come on up. We'll start by just turning the hands out. Turn your fingers all to the side of your mat and go side to side to gently stretch your wrists, wrists before we do any chaturangas or anything on our hands. So just a gentle rock side to side. The closer your hands are, the deeper the stretches in this. So find just the right spot for you. Keep the navel lifted. And we'll turn both hands around towards the knees. If this is too much to do both at once, you can do one at a time. I'll let you know when we're halfway through. Start to lean back towards the heels. Good, come forwards. Exhale, lean back. If you're just doing one hand, add the switch side, sorry. And go again, exhale, stretch. Shift forwards and exhale, stretch. Great, come forwards, turn your hands forwards. Give each a moment on the back of a hand. So simply flip the palm up, back of a hand to the mat, facing your knee with the fingers. 
Just give them a little counter pose, one hand and then the other hand. And back. Now, if you're a little tighter in the hamstrings, have your blocks near the front of your mat and I'll meet you in a downward facing dog. Just start to pedal your legs, wake them up. Let one knee bend and then the other. And we'll go through our flow slowly first to start building heat and make sure you're comfortable with all your alignment. And we'll flow a little more fluidly. Right foot goes up to the sky. Point through your toes, lift up through the heel. Keep your arms strong and pushing. Bend your right knee and open up that right hip. So your right toes reach over to the left side of your space as far as you can. Keep your chest squared to the mat. Lift the knee high, we'll hold three, and two, let the left heel sink really heavy. And one, square it up, straighten up. Look forwards and step right foot to thumb. Spin the left heel all the way open, all the way down. Warrior two, rise up. Left hand back, right forwards. Right thigh parallel to the earth. And if your stride isn't quite as wide, it might not be as parallel, but that's okay. Arms parallel to the earth. Keep your right knee pulling right. Settle in, Yogi, another deep breath. Turn your right palm, left hand wraps around your low back, right hand up to the sky. Stay deep in that right knee. Keep it pulling right. And side angle pose, reach your right hand down inside of your right knee, undo the left hand and send it forwards. So it's now palm facing the floor, right hand reaching as close as you can to the ground. It might be that you benefit from a block and you can have it on any height. Your fingertips may touch the earth. Good, come back up to your warrior two, breathe in. And as you exhale, spin down to the ground with your left hand. Come onto your left toes. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this is a beginner plus flow, so some familiarity with the poses. So either you can take a knee side plank that's gonna be left knee down with the right foot stretched back, or you can join me in stacking the feet for a stacked foot side plank, the right foot on top of the left. You're on the outer blade of your left foot. Lift your hips, flex your feet, hold three. Push your left arm, two. The gaze is the same as we were in tabletop. Down, neutral or up. One, spin down to the ground. Both palms down, all 10 toes down. Shift forwards, chaturanga, slow descent, elbows close to your ribs. Pause if you can. Cobra or up dog. Rise up. Soften down, please, all the way to the floor, even if you're in your up dog. And come up again into another cobra, hips down. Roll up, elbows squeeze close, another back bend, just waking up your spine. And soften down. Take your hands off the side of your mat with your elbows high. Fingertips down, but the palms are up, so you suck them all the way in towards one another. And roll up again, more like a lizardy type cobra. Right shoulder to center, look over your upper left arm. Inhale back up. Left shoulder to center, look over your right arm. Come back up, breathe in, pull the heart forward and up, ribs out of your waist, exhale down. Hands under shoulders, press your way up to knee plank or plank and to downward facing dog. Same on the other side, please Yogi, send your left foot up to the sky. Open up the hip, bend your knee, reach your left toes to the right, Relax your neck as you look at your right toes and sink your right heel towards the ground. Pause here. Another full breath. Square it up, straighten up, step forwards. Plant your left toes to the front of a mat, rise up, warrior two. Open it up. If you need to adjust the distance between your feet, you can. Press down through the outer right foot. Left knee 
over the ankle or slightly behind. Try and avoid going forwards and putting too much strain in the knee if you can help it. And firm up the belly. Turn your left palm up. Wrap your right hand into a half bind and stretch your left hand up high. And coming through into side angle, left hand starts to reach low. Unwrap your right arm, spin it forwards with the palm down. And again, you've got option to use your block if you wish. Keep your left hip hugging towards the middle of your mat and your side angle, trying to create a straight line of energy from your right outer foot to your fingertips. And spin it up, warrior two. Deep breath in and down to the mat with the right hand, spin onto your right toes. Again, a knee side plank is okay if you want to take that. A full side plank is okay if you want to take that. Come onto the outer right foot if you're taking a stacked foot. Right knee down, left leg extended like we did at the beginning, if that's your choice, hold there. Push your right arm. Looking down is a bit more stable. Neutral, somewhere in the middle. Up a bit more of a challenge. That's it, hold what you got. Breathe deeply, keep your hips high, squeeze front and back of your body, flex both feet, spin down to the mat, chaturanga, shift forwards. Slow descent halfway, knees can be up or down. Cobra or an upward facing dog. And soften all the way down to the ground. Roll up again for another cobra. Shoulders away from your ears. And down to the mat. Hands off the side of a mat, fingertips down, palms up, elbows high. Roll it up. So opening into the front of your body, drop your right shoulder in and stretch out the shoulder. Inhale to center. Drop your left shoulder in. And come back. All the way down to the floor. Hands under shoulders, toes, toes tuck. Press elbows close in, push up. Uh, knee plank or plank, downward facing dog. Slow your breath down. Good. Look forwards, walk step or hop your way up to your hands. Lift up halfway. Let's take a few breaths in a forward fold. So this is where I mentioned if you're Feeling a little tighter in your hamstrings, your blocks under your hands are really good. If you're comfortable in your forward fold, feet about hip distance apart. Inner thighs spinning back. Three more breaths here. And lift up halfway, stretch your torso out, fold forwards. Soften your knees, circle your hands up high. Look up to the ceiling, hands to your heart. Let's take a moment to balance. Stand on your left foot, pardon me. Lift your right foot up into tree. You can place it on the calf or the thigh, that's your choice. Open the right knee out wide and stretch your arms out wide. Keep your left glute and quad strong. Lift up through Mula Banda and the heart. Three and two. And one, bring that hands in. Right foot back down to the ground. Pour all the weight into your right foot as you lift your left up to tree. Place the foot on the calf or on the thigh. Open the knee wide. Engage your right glute. Stand tall. Expand the arms out. Hold there. Three, heart lifts, eyes set on one point, two, deep breaths, yogis, strong and stable, and one, bring it in, release your foot, circle your hands up on your breath in, fold forwards, lift up halfway, stretch out, chaturanga, or meet us in downward facing dog, cobra, or upward facing, Downward facing, traditional, tra uh, traditional vinyasa. Take three deep breaths, just settle in. Good. 
Long inhales and full exhales. Swing, right foot goes up. Stretch it high. Exhale, bend the knee, open up, sink your left heel towards the floor. Inhale, stretch your right foot back up. Exhale, step your right foot forwards. Open up, warrior two, inhale. Exhale, deepen in. Reverse your warrior, right hand high, left hand wraps around the low back. Exhale, side angle pose. Getting that long side stretch, look down to the mat. We're going to move into a half moon. Let's take a supported one this round. Bring your left hand to hip. You might grab your block, especially if you're tighter in the hamstrings. Look forwards, take your block out to the right as you reach and lift your left foot up. And so you might need your block. You could have it on any height or you can have your hand on the floor. Left hand to hip, open your chest up, play around with your gaze. So first off, sorry, check your left foot's lifted out a foot to the sky like it was earlier. And if you're looking down, that's good. Maybe you feel like you could look to the side of a room. Maybe you feel a little bit adventurous, could look up to the sky. Could you take your left hand up? Any part of this works, release it down nice and easy. Step it back. Mm -hmm. Land light, come back up to your warrior two. Spin down to the ground, left hand down. Spin onto your left toes. Now, as I reminded you on round one, you could take a knee side plank. If that's where you're at right now with your strength, that's perfect. Straighten the left arm. If you'd like to join me in another variation, take your right ankle, come into tree pose in your side plank. Place your right foot on the thigh if you were before standing or on a calf, wherever it was in your standing pose. Hips high. Play around with the, ba the gaze. Look to the side or even up. Woo. Hold three, two, one. If you're feeling a little crazy, you could try your chaturanga with tree pose. Keep that knee lifting to the sky, shift forwards, lower down, and then release for your cobra or your upward facing dog. Straight to downward facing dog on this round, yogis. Take a deep breath, reset. Sigh it out. Left foot up to the sky, breathe in. Open up the hip. Inhale, stretch up and square up. Exhale, step forwards. Warrior two, open it up. Reverse with the half bind with the right arm. And side angle. Looking down. You might use your block, remember. We'll put the hand on the hip. Look forwards of your mat, take your block out to the left for your half moon. If you put it right in front of your left foot, it's more difficult to balance. Reach forwards, lift the outer right foot up, balance on your left leg, both legs are straight and strong. Open the right hand up if you can. You can look down, or you could try looking to the side, keep that right outer heel lift in, or you could try reaching up or looking up. Land light as a feather, yogis. Soften it back, warrior two. Spin down to the ground, right hand down. Remember, you can put your knee down, you could stack your feet, or you can take a hold left hand around left ankle. Come onto the outside of a right foot, plant that left foot to the inner right thigh and expand open, tree pose inside plank. Hold what you got there. Play around with your gaze. Keep your right arm really engaged, right fingertips strong, gripping. Left hand straight to the sky and spin it down. Now you could release your foot for chaturanga or you could try with your tree pose and release for cobra or up dog and downward facing dog. Before we go any further, let's take five deep breaths. You can pause wherever you wish. Down dog, dolphin. You could rest in child's pose. Slow your breath down. Or 
Namaste. Come on up. We're going to tuck your toes and just take a little detour for a minute. You're welcome if you need a blanket in Goddess to put a blanket under your heels. I'm just going to stretch your hips a little while longer here. Elbows press into the inner, <laughs> inner thighs, inner knees, upper arms, should I say. And hold out the Goddess here, Malasana. Or if you would like to practice your crow pose, you could take a few breaths in crow. So either goddess with your heels on your blankets or heels on the floor. Hold here if this is best for your practice. Or if you wish, plant your hands, bring your feet in close together. Toes touching, hips lift, knees come to the upper arms. Look forwards of your mat and you can keep your toes down while you build strength. Elbows need to shift far enough forwards to come over the wrists. Grip your fingers, firm your belly. Keep looking forwards, don't look at your feet. If they feel like they could float, you could lift them up. Feel a feeling of rising energy. Eyes at one single point. Two more breaths. If you're in crow pose, start to land back in goddess. Widen the feet, come back down. And we're going to sit all the way down to the mat. Right off the brim. <laughs> sit all the way down to the mat. Stretch your right foot out and put your left foot on your inner right thigh. Turn towards your right leg. Take both hands up and reach that way. You can put your hands on the floor either side of your right calf or you could reach for your foot. Four deep breaths. Keep the back of your neck long. Sit your way up and switch your other side. Left foot out, right foot into the inner left leg. Turn towards your left leg. Both hands extend up. Full breath in and use your exhale to fold. And like I say, you could put your hands either side of the shin. They could hold the foot or the knee wherever they reach comfortably. And four more breaths in this one too. Line up. You can cross over the shins, shift forwards into your downward facing dog. One more round. And like I said in the introduction, take any variation you wish. So if I guide you into one that doesn't feel good or not possible right now, any of the previous variations are awesome. Take what you need, leave what doesn't serve you. Right foot up to the sky, breathe in. Open up your hip, exhale. Inhale, square up, straighten up. Step your right foot forwards. Open up to warrior two. Settle in. Reverse, left hand half binds. And this time, a straighten of a right leg. Reach forwards and then down with your right hand, up with your left. Now again, like we did in side angle before, you can have your hand on a block, you could have it on the inside of a foot, you can have your fingertips on the floor, wherever you feel like is a comfortable reach, but remember your priority in a triangle is to keep your left shoulder open and your right collarbone shining to the sky a little bit. If you feel yourself bowing towards the floor, this arm starts to drop, or you're relying on that shoulder flexibility alone to get it up, come up and out so you can align. Another deep breath, keep the right knee a little bit soft. Good. We'll bend into the front knee. Look forwards of your mat. Start to come into your side angle. Right foot 
balancing, left outer foot to the ceiling. You can maybe now hover your fingertips if you're feeling a little more balanced. You could take your left hand forwards if that feels good, parallel to the earth. So hopefully a straight-ish line from heel to foot, uh, heel to fingertips. Hold three, as light in your right hand as you can. Two, right quad is strong. One, good, carefully release down. Warrior two. Woo. Spin it down to the ground, left hand to the floor. Right hand, if you wish, takes a hold of a right foot and use that space that triangle gave you. So either tree pose, side plank, or Vashyasthasana, holding onto the outside of a right foot or the big toe. Stretch that foot up high, hips high, hold. Three. If you can't straighten your leg, it's okay. Two. And one, and we'll carefully release. And vinyasa, chaturanga, you could keep your right foot lifted through chaturanga. Pop it down for your up dog. And downward facing. Take a deep breath in. Sigh out. Left foot goes up to the ceiling. Open up the hip. Square it up, step forwards. Open up, warrior two. Use your exhale to find depth. Left hand to the sky, right hand half wraps. And this time coming into two triangle, Trikonasana. Left hand forwards and down. Create space in your left side. Right hand up to the ceiling. Lengthen your whole left side body. Keep your torso as open as you can to the side of a rim. Turn into Mula Banda. Left knee is straight but not locked. Good, look down. Bend your knee, reach forwards. Half moon, Ardha Chandra, Chandrasana. You could use your block or you could try to now hover your fingertips so they barely touch the earth. What happens if you wanted to stretch your right hand forwards? Again, parallel-ish to the earth. Hold there. If you fall out, have another go. Three. Maybe look to the side. Two. Strengthen everything. And one. Step it back. Super light. Find your balance. Spin down to the ground. Right hand down. Any version of side plank, including full Vashastasana, if you want, make sure your right fingertips are spread out wide. Make sure the right hand is just in front of the right shoulder so you're not scooped up. Open the out hip or the outer foot to the back behind you. Three. And two. And one, carefully release, yogi. Down towards the mat. Shift forwards, you could keep your foot lifted if that's in your practice. Pop it down first for your up dog. And downward facing. Lower your knees down. Balasana, child's pose. Good. Come on up, tuck your toes, widen your feet, make your way back. Once again into goddess at the back. Find your hip stretch. Like I said, you're welcome to put your heels on a blanket if that feels better to you. Let's take a little twist. Everything we've done today has been very linear and hip opening. So let's take a twist. Right hand down to the mat, right in a Upper arm stays on the inner knee. Left hand can press on the inner left knee lightly, or you could stretch it up. Some of you may also feel warm enough to bind this. So left hand around the low back, right hand around, or right arm around the right knee. And taking a bind in this if that's in your practice. If a bind just feels a bit funky, don't force it. It can be a bit tricky, especially when we haven't worked specifically towards binds. And carefully release. Same thing on the other side. Left hand to the floor, right hand up to the ceiling. And if you want to half bind this or full bind it, should I say, left arm around your left leg, right hand finding the left. If you've got a slightly closer grip than I do, I just have my fingertips, left fingertips around right wrist. 
or left hand around right wrist. One more breath. And carefully release. Back to center. Another chance for you to take flight in your crow pose. You can also take a forward fold. So if you're feeling enough of a uh, goddess and you don't wish to do crow pose, pop your hips up, straighten out your legs and take a forward fold instead. If you want to take another moment of crow pose, big toes touch, hands shoulder distance. Lift your bum up, place your knees on the backs of your arms, look forward. You can put a bolster in front of you for stability or safety net, should I say. Hug your elbows in a little bit so they're not flaring wide. Grip your fingers. Maybe float one foot or both feet. Is it okay if I stay down? No. Work in strength and alignment. Three. Use your ujjayi breaths. Two. Stay focused with your eyes. And one. Good. Come down towards your goddess. And straighten out your legs. And we'll all meet in a forward fold. So if you had taken this already... We're just joining you. Lift up halfway, stretch out long. And fold forwards. Soften your knees, circle your hands up high. Look at hands to heart. So we're going to use the openness that we created in your half moon and your triangle and your side angle to try your extended hand to foot, which some of you have already done in Vashistasana in your side plank. So stand on your left foot, lift your right foot up, your gentle version, I'll also turn to face you guys, your gentle version in this is tree pose. So you can have foot to thigh, a calf, foot to thigh, or you can reach your right hand around the outside of your foot. Just grip the, the tippiest parts of your fingers around the edge of a foot or first two fingers around your big toe. Stand up tall. Start to open this out. It's okay if you need to keep your knee a little bit bent. Stay upright in your spine. Balance yourself out with your left hand. Open that right foot. The key is to think toes up, up high as you straighten the leg. Press through that heel. Then play around with your balance. Could you look out to the left? Go slowly with that. Keep pulling the outside of a right foot to the space behind you. Three. Left leg strong and straight. Two. And one. Turn everything forwards. Bring it in carefully. And back down to the ground. One more time on the other side. Right foot is your balancer. Lift up the left. Remember, you could always take a tree pose at any height. That's still opening the hips and working your balance. And you can still use your arms and look to the side. So much is the same. Hook your fingers around the outside of a foot or take your big toe if you're taking Uttita Hasta Parangastasana. Left foot out and up. If it's bent, that's okay. Keep your spine straight. Start to kick up, up, up with the foot. You can hold here or play around with looking out to the right. Hold there. Strong and stable. If you fall out, have another go. You've got this yogi. Come on back. See if you can exit with as much grace and poise as you entered. And bring your feet back down to the ground. Take a deep breath. Sigh it out. Circle your hands up. Deep breath in. Fold forwards. Lift up, stretch out long. Walk your hands forwards back into your downward facing dog. So let's start to twist this out a little bit, yogis. Twist some back bends to finish this up. So make sure that we have about a full practice. Shorten your down dog by just a couple of inches, not too much, but maybe at that instance you can get your heels down. I've been a bit shorter if you couldn't already. Get your left hand Really firm into the mat, grip your fingers, make sure there is plenty of grip with the hand. If there's any chance of sliding, skip this part. Right hand towards the left foot. So maybe it stops halfway through the mat and you look under your left arm. Some of you are comfortable reaching for the left leg, calf or heel, and turning into a twist. Press your left heel towards the ground. Hug your hips to the right. Get 
Good, carefully release. Find a really good grip with your right hand, make sure it's not going to slide. Left hand could stay halfway towards the right foot and twist there. And if you're comfortable with reaching left hand to right calf or heel, reach as low down towards the foot as you can and twist through. Look under the right underarm, hips a little to the left, right heel towards the floor. And carefully release. Bring both hands back down to the floor. And sigh out. Blow your knees down to the ground. And sit back onto your heels. Other than a few cobras and up dogs, we haven't prepped specifically for a deep back bend. So I encourage you to go carefully with your strassana, with your camel and not force it. If you tend to be naturally quite back bendy, it's, uh, you'll feel comfortable perhaps right from the start. Some people need to stretch particularly for camel to be comfortable in it. So be aware of that. Come on up, hips over knees. Hands to the low back, elbows squeeze in, fingers down, thumbs around the outside of your waist there. Tuck your toes and on your inhale, puff the chest up to the sky, draw your shoulders onto your back. And lift your chin a few degrees and hold here in a supported camel. Now, if you want to go deeper, you can do so. You could reach for your heels. Good, one more breath. Come up, neutral. Exhale, continue to sit in neutral. Sit on your feet if you can. If sitting on your feet doesn't feel good to your knees or your feet, sit up again or even take a seat on the floor for a second. We'll just take a couple of breaths to reset. As we've been doing all day, we'll build this up a little bit. You're welcome to remain in that first expression of camel, especially if your back feels a little bit tight. If you were there and felt very comfortable and want to go deeper, let's take another stage. Come on up, tuck your toes, hands to low back. Squeeze your shoulders. And inhale, lift your heart and reach one hand. Make sure it finds the heel. And if it feels there comfortably, finds it comfortably, take the other hand there too. You could have your feet flat too as well in that expression. Squeeze your shoulders together, pull your hips forwards and heart up. Don't let your head fall back. Keep your neck strong. Three, remember to breathe. If you can't breathe, it's too deep. And two. One more. Carefully start to drop your chin, move your hips back, sit your weight up and back to your feet. Neutral once again, pause here or sitting on the floor. Just feeling your breath start to come back to a more natural pace. And start to walk your hands forwards into child pose. And breathe all the way down to your low back like you did right at the beginning. Relax your shoulders. And come up nice and slowly. Make your way up to your seat. Take a deep breath in. Clasp your hands behind your back. Exhale. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. One more stretch here for the shoulders. And release. Come to your seat. Place the soles of your feet together. Shimmy side to side on your bum. Get your bum kind of out of the way and come into Baddha Konasana. You could hold your feet as you bow forwards. Keep your spine quite long and perhaps close your eyes.
and sit up. Tuck your right foot in close to underneath your left thigh and either slide your left heel closer to the right shin or if possible, put the left foot over to the right side of the right thigh. Sit up tall. Just anchor your left sit bone towards the ground. Take your right hand up to the ceiling and twist. You can either wrap your right elbow around your left knee or you can bring your elbow outside of the knee. And you could also actually bind this up if you have that in your practice comfortably. If you're familiar with that, if it's not yet in your practice, the twist is perfect without the bind too. Look all the way back, close your eyes. Two more breaths. Carefully unwind. You can unravel your legs and switch the side. Bring your left foot in underneath your right thigh and either the right foot to the left shin or right foot to left thigh side of a mat. Move your left heel out from under your bum. Get your right side of your bum towards the mat. Sit up tall. Left hand up. Extend through the side of your body. And as you exhale, move into your twist. And again, you can either wrap your arm around your knee or tuck your elbow outside of your knee. Or those of you with a comfortable bind are welcome to bind. Okay, carefully unravel, coming back to center, uncross the legs and stretch them straight out. Again, a little shift of your bum back. Make sure that your spine remains long as we take a forward fold, same as we did with those twists. Take your hands up and then fold. And if you would like to rest your hands by your thighs, that works. If you're a little lower with your hands by your calves, that works. If you're comfortable reaching for the feet, you can do so. And if you have that extra flexibility, you can even put a block at the bottom of your feet and hold on to that. And we'll start to sit our way up. Move your way to the middle of your mat. And you can lie down to Shavasana, uh, no, sorry, to the floor. We're going to be making our way towards Shavasana shortly. And so make sure that you have anything that you need for that nearby. But we're going to stretch first. Just a couple more. So lying down on your back. Heels close to your bum. Again, just finishing up with a lot of back bends and twists to keep your practice balanced. Feet hip distance apart, exhale. Hands, palms face down for a start. Inhale, lift your hips. And you may hold here, or if you wish, come up onto the upper arms with the palms together, hands clasped for bridge. Keep your gaze neutral or close your eyes. Keep pushing through all four corners of your feet and keep lifting through the hips. Another full breath. And lower your way down. Bring your right knee into your torso, hold on to the thigh or shin, stretch your left leg out. Lengthen out the back of your neck, make sure your chin's not too high. And relax here. Your breath's starting to get easier and easier. So we come towards the end of a practice. There can be less emphasis on depth, less emphasis on ujjayi. 
more emphasis on letting your exhales be complete and slow and calming your body down towards Shavasana. And we'll switch your legs, stretch your right leg out and bring your left knee in. Just relax your shoulders, your jaw, your eyes. Place your left foot on the floor and bring your right leg over the top of it. So it's like your sat lady legs, you've got your legs crossed. And then bring both knees in towards you. You might just do a little lift in your bum to get your leg back towards the ground. Hold onto your knees, your shins or your feet, taking reclining cow face pose, just a little bit of a stretch for the right hip. And release the feet, but keep your legs crossed. Bring your lower legs towards one another. Put your left toes on the mat and move your hips to the right an inch. And twist, left knees over to the left. If with the cross leg it feels a little too intense, you can always uncross. Let your right arm stretch out to the right. Look out to the right with your eyes closed. Come up to the middle, uncross, re-straighten. And bring your left leg over your right. And getting thighs on top of one another. Bring your knees up towards you, hold onto your knees, your shins or your feet, and bring your feet out to the sides like you're in cow face, Gomukhasana. Left thigh towards your torso, soften, release, relax. This can be a really nice stretch if you get a hint of sciatica sometimes from tight piriformis. And release your feet, but bring them closer together. Keep the cross. Put your right toes on the mat and move your hips to the left just an inch. Both knees will come to the right for your twist this time. Eagle leg reclining twist. And you can carefully unwind from your eagle leg twist. Unwrap, unwrap the legs, hips back to the middle, find the center of your mat and bring both knees into you. Let's gently rock side to side across your low back. And we'll come into Shavasana. You can stretch your legs out. If you're comfortable lying flat, you're welcome to do so. But if that sometimes makes your low back a bit tight, take the time to prop your knees up, either on your bolster, or if you have a couple of blocks and a blanket, you can create, create the same effect by putting your blocks on their lowest, side by side, and your blanket on top. And just pop that behind your knees. And lie your way back. 
cover up with a blanket if it's cold where you are or chilly. Take a few moments to shimmy and shuffle. Make sure the whole body is relaxed. We'll do a body scan to release any residual tension. If you start to drift off, you can let these words just float by. Let your feet relax. Toes, bottoms of your feet and tops of your feet. Let the ankles, the shins, the calves soften. Your legs were so strong in your practice, they get to relax. Relax your thighs, all around your thighs, fronts, backs and sides. And relax your glutes. Release tension from your pelvis. And soften your belly. Relax the middle of your back and your shoulders into the support of your mat. Soften across the chest, the collarbones, into the shoulders, the upper arms, the elbows, and forearms. Relax the wrist and the palms and all of your fingers, both of your thumbs. Making sure the neck's comfortable, the jaw soft, tongue relaxed, all of the tiny muscles in your face relaxed, especially the ones around your eyes. And drop back away from the busyness of the thinking mind. Let your attention move down into the center of your chest, into your heart space, somewhere quieter within. And allow yourself, give yourself permission to rest.
And you can start now with little movements. Open and close your hands. Flex and point your feet and wiggle your toes. And deepen your breath. As you deepen your breath, let your movements get bigger. Eventually making your way into a morning-like stretch. And bend your knees. And move to lie on your side. And then come up to your comfortable seat for pranayama and meditation. So if you have a meditation cushion, you might choose to grab that now and sit your way up onto it. If you don't have a cushion, your blocks would do or blanket will do. And take enough time to really get settled here. We're going to be sat for about 10 minutes or so. And you don't want to feel sensation of stretch when you're sat for pranayama or meditation. It wants to be all about the inner work. You've spent your practice stretching and strengthening and basically preparing your body to be able to sit in this way. So once you get settled, make final adjustments. Make sure you're not tilted forwards or back. Make sure as well your chin is not too high or too low. Invite a deeper breath in and out. Relax your shoulders. We'll practice some alternate nostril breathing. So this is using manipulation of a hand to the nostrils to channel the breath through each side of a nostril. If you are uncomfortable with this practice, you can either practice a balanced breath or a perceived alternate nostril where you don't actually alternate with the hand. You just imagine the breath to be doing the different sides. That also, it can be effective. So if you're joining me with the manipulation, you're gonna take the first two fingers of your right hand and rest them lightly between your eyebrows. Now, if you're doing this practice at night, you might prefer to curl them into your palm for a lightly, a slightly less activating energy. Block your right nostril with your thumb when you're ready to breathe in and breathe in just through the left side. When you're full of breath, block the left nostril with your ring finger and exhale through the right. Stay the same, breathe in through the right side. and then switch so you breathe out through the left. That's one whole round. Take your time, all the time you need. Breathe in through the left so you're not forcing or rushing your breath. It's smooth and soundless. Get till where you're full, and then nice and easily switch to the other side. Left, blocked, exhale through the right. When you're empty of breath, no alteration is made. Breathe in through that same side. Soundless, slow, steady, and out through the left. So remember, you only switch sides when your breath is full. When you've taken all the breath in, that's when you switch. When you're empty of breath, you stay the same. Start now to go through your own guidance. Like I said, it's possible to do this as a perceived practice, so if this isn't feeling good to you, you can always do the work with the imagination. And if that too also doesn't feel that great, you could take a balanced breath. Just another minute or two.
make sure your elbow stays close to your chest so that it doesn't get tired. And make sure that you're not pressing really hard with your fingers into your forehead. You're still relaxed. Also invite the breath to be really full, not cut short in any way. Coming to the end of our breathing practice, complete the round you're on. When you've breathed out through the left side, you can release your hand back to rest slightly in your lap. Eyes still closed. Just let your attention settle on your breath. It's moving naturally now. No need to alter it in any way. As it starts to find its easy inhale and exhale, please watch for the moment of pause at the top of your inhale. As your breath changes directions before the exhale, that slight moment of stillness. Then again, observe the end of your exhale. Is there a tiny moment of pause before your exhale becomes an inhale? Just let your breath move naturally and watch for these moments of stillness at the top of the inhale and end of the exhale. This is where we'll let our attention settle for meditation. And as you observe this little tiny pause between the breaths, it may open up and expand. And if it does so, you can allow it to do so and linger within that space. But if that doesn't happen today, that's okay too. You don't need to force it or try to make anything happen. Just let it unfold naturally. We'll sit for a couple of minutes, observing the space between the breaths. If your mind wanders, that's okay. Once you notice you're successful in your meditation, you've realized the tendency of a mind to wander. And once again, you guide it back to your breath.
Let your mind move away from the breath. If it was somewhere else entirely, bring it back here to this, to this moment. And bring your hands to a preposition. Thank yourself for coming to your mat today. And together, let's take a deep breath in. And let the breath go. Thank you for your practice, Yogi. Namaste. If you enjoyed this practice, please remember to press the like button and leave me a comment. Also remember to subscribe for more yoga and meditation videos. Thank you, Yogi.